Hello and welcome to Find Your Freedom, a podcast dedicated to helping you truly find freedom in all aspects of life. Join your hosts and their expert guests as they share practical tips and strategies for finding more freedom in your life. It's time to take control of your life and create the future you want. Let's find your freedom. Here are your hosts, Lenny the Boss and Omid Rad Investor. Boom, boom, boom. We are back with another amazing episode of Find Your Freedom. And before we get into our next guest, which I'm super excited, met her at another conference and the energies just came together and made this big old energy there. And I'm in that, and we're happy to bring her on stage, but we have a free downloadable uh, gift for you. All you have to do is go to www.findyourfreedomrei.com forward slash freedom kit. Go there, easily downloadable. It absolutely will help you in your journey. Once again, www.findyourfreedomrei.com find your freedom rei.com forward slash freedom kid all right so i want to get to our guest right you know um this is really cool because she calls herself the short-term rental boss baby right it, that, that's that that's awesome I, I love that right she's a amazon bestseller author okay she has a strong uh portfolio that includes over six successful businesses right uh one of them is the stella investment uh, destinations and she's uh, got this big huge conference coming up you know where it's going to be amazing if you don't got your ticket run out and get your ticket now right called the str a uh, wealth uh, summit where she's um the co-creator of that and we're going to get into that and a few other things so ruby 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 how you doing how are you i'm doing good how are y'all guys super excited to be on here Oh man, we are super excited to have you. It's been a, a, a while since we uh, linked up out in Nashville. So with that being said, we got to kick this puppy off because I know you got some jewels that you're going to be dropping <laughs> all through this episode. So um, if you could just give the listeners a little background on yourself. Absolutely. So my name is Ruby. I'm located in Central Texas in a town called New Braunfels. It's where Schlitterbahn, the biggest water park, um, world's biggest water park they say it is but um so my background is I've been marketing for uh 18 plus years um after that I got into the short-term rental space I was in real estate before then then I was in the wedding industry kind of combined both of them and then I grew a very very large portfolio of a management company with my fiance Jerome he's a broker here in Texas so then I created a interior design, hospitality design firm. So we started designing places and we redesigned our personal condo that took me about five years to convince Jerome to redesign it. And it's absolutely beautiful and amazing. And it's called Las Palmas. It's like you're walking into Mexico, but it's in New Braunfels on the Comal River. Uh, bright pink, blue walls when you walk in wallpaper in every room. It's crazy, but it's beautiful. So we started incorporating that to everything else that we do. And then, uh, of course, my I, I partner up with my fiance on his real estate business. So he has an acquisitions company specifically for short-term rentals. We have a team. Then I am also a co-host uh, for a podcast called Wet in Bed Podcast that me and Helen Christopher um, rolled out a couple of weeks ago. And so we're still learning all the curves and everything and all the we're with all the little bumps on the road. But so it's pretty much how we combine weddings and short-term rentals to maximize revenue. And then, of course, the big thing is recently we launched the STR Growth Summit. So me and Judah, um, Ooh, he came to me and he, he's like, Ruby, I have an idea. I want to do something. And then here we are. But it's it's been amazing. It's been an amazing ride. And then on top of all that, I'm a mom. I've been a mom since I was 16. My three children uh, is my why and everything I do and continue to be. And then I cannot wait for the next five to 10 years when I get those grandbabies because then that will actually, that's my why. My future grandbabies is my why. And then, uh, but yeah. All right. So, so Ruby, so we met um, 
in Nashville initially. So I remember you had a very lime green jacket. So you really stood out. So I feel like that's like a, um, you know, that kind of showcase kind of like your personality a little bit. Like it, it just like popped in. And I think like Lenny said, it's like, that's your energy. We also ran into each other again in Austin at a different conference as well as a STR, um, whatever it's called. Yeah, it was like you know, the like, STR Austin Summit or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, I, I just want to share like the power of just like building relationships and having high energy and, and just how those things kind of evolved into bigger things. So, um, you know, it, I guess you even uh, like being having a marketing background, how do you decide, hey, I'm going to trans transition into something different? Because I think there's a lot of listeners who maybe they, they're they stuck with the, the nine to five. They have the same job. They they may think that, that their skill set doesn't translate into something different. So how did you kind of take that leap of faith as you initially transitioned? Oh, that's that's a, that's actually a hard question. It started back when I was 22 years old and I wasn't happy with having to work the nine to five. Actually, at that time, I was working for a corporate where I was in sales and I was working weekends and I just had a baby. Um, she was maybe about four to six months old. So then since then, I've been working for my own. It's I'm, in, I'm 36 years old now. I think for the last, my goodness, 16, 18 years, I've been working by myself. Um, I love it. It's hard. It's really, 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 really hard. I've had a lot of struggles. I've had to recreate myself many, many times. Um, sometimes I have a vision and I go with it. And then a couple months down the road, it's not the vision I envisioned, but I'm still trekking through. And then I'm still doing this or that. But now at this age, I'm combining everything that I love. Uh, marketing is something I absolutely love. Networking and meeting people is something I absolutely love. Like that lime green jacket was a complete accident, complete accident. And now I have lime green nails. Lime green has been my color since that event in March. And that was a $9.99 blazer that I picked up at Ross heading to the airport because I forgot that I did not pack a jacket or anything warm for Nashville. I thought we were still going to Texas weather. And then that piece became the staple piece and it became my my moment my it became my new brand it became my, my me my I don't know how to explain it. it was like it was destined to be found for me to wear it and I did not know what it was going to do for my future and my future was actually very short it was just three months it was just three months so three months so much has changed I'm not the same person I'm not, I'm not in the same, I'm not doing business like I was. So, okay. Can I, so can I interrupt you right there? Absolutely. So three months. So what has happened in three months and why the, the big change? I, I love how you talk about like recreating yourself because I think that's so important. So many people are afraid to recreate themselves. But I think that's just such a big process of growth. So what happened in the past three months? It is hard. It is hard. I was supposed to listen I was supposed to listen to that recreating process a couple of years ago, and I did not listen. Um, a year ago, I got very ill. Um, I ended up in the hospital. I had a cyst that ruptured, turned into sepsis. I had surgery, was hospitalized for a couple of uh, days. And after that, I didn't feel like myself. And I love being active. Um, my little nickname is called the Energizer Bunny because I'm always I'm always at the go, 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 go. I can't just stay sitting down. Even if I'm sitting and resting, I'm over here thinking. I have a notebook of ideas on the side of my bed. And a lot of my ideas happen at 2 o'clock in the morning. I wake up. I write them down because my fiance does not like me waking him up at 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> but with that sickness, I thought it was just that. It was just a little episode. I got sick, had sepsis. My immune system was low. I had gone COVID a couple of times. I thought it was just me, my immune system being low. So fast forward to March, we go to the event, great event, uh, met some amazing people. It was cold, got back to Texas, and I got sick. And I was like, okay, so I must have picked COVID in the airport. I must have picked up a cold or the flu. 
I was down for 14 days. I could not wake up. I could not move. My body ached. I couldn't eat. I lost about 15 pounds. I went completely in, in this hermit stage. So I was like, okay, it must have been, I'm tired. I didn't sleep. I guess I partied a little bit too hard, something. So after the 14 days, I started feeling a little bit better. And then that's when um, I believe was, yes, it was. It was in Austin, the Austin Summit. So that was the week that I was like, okay, let's go. Let's go out. And then after my birthday, because my birthday was on the 13th of April, on the 16th of April, which was a Saturday or Sunday, we were heading down to go visit my kids. And I looked up to Jerome in tears and I said, you have to take me to the hospital. And he's wow. like, what's wrong with you? I was like, I don't know. I was like, this is this. I, I have to go to the hospital. I'm feeling I feel like I'm having a heart attack and feeling like something's not right with me. So he took me to the hospital. My blood pressure at that point, because I was having heart pains, I was having dizziness. I couldn't walk. My lip was down. Um, wow. And my blood pressure was 230 over 198. Wow. The minute they took that, they put me straight to what they thought I was going through a stroke. Uh, later on, we did find out that I had a very small stroke. Um, so from April 16th to now, I'm still trying to figure out what is wrong with me. Um, I've been hospitalized three times already. The second hospital hospitalization was about a week and a half after my first one, different hospital. Uh, they actually looked through all my records since that's where I had all my kids. They looked at my blood, um, my blood work. My blood work didn't come out fine. They came in and they said, um, I believe you're going to have to get referred out to an oncologist. Something that you definitely did not want to hear. So I was actually alone uh, when the doctor came in and I was just like, I'm sorry. He's like, your blood work is pretty much borderline leukemia. But since you're so sick and your blood pressure is so high and we don't know what's going on, we don't, we can't tell you if that's what it is. So they controlled my blood pressure. They brought it back down. The next day, my stepdad uh, called MD Anderson, since we're here in, in Texas. MD Anderson said, has she been diagnosed? My stepdad said, no, they just think she, she's getting told to look at at an oncologist and this oncologist locally they don't have any openings until july so she said oh my okay, gosh yeah until july locally so my stepdad said is there anything that we can do so she can get looked at and the nurse said let me put you on hold she came back and said if she has her labs the doctor is okay with looking at them but let me warn you the doctor will only see her if he sees that there's something wrong or needs to be seen immediately. But that does not mean that if I call you and say she's not going to be able to get seen, that doesn't mean that she doesn't have anything. That means you're going to have to exhaust your local resources. In 18 hours, in less than 18 hours, I get a text message on my phone. I was actually uh, recording, I think I was recording my first podcast with Helen. And I saw that it said MD chart. I opened it and it was my appointment. And it said hematologist appointment and labs. And I started freaking out. I was like, what? I was like 18 hours. They told me that it was going to be doable. They must have actually saw something. So we ended up going again to MD Anderson for my initial appointment. Uh, my initial appointment um, they did all the exams, the tests that they needed to do, and they were able to conclude that I did not have leukemia, which was a huge one. Okay. But Great. that I did have some sort of blood disorder, which we're still trying to figure out what disorder that is. My iron level was a six when it was supposed to be at normal 75, 76 range. The doctors had no idea why or how I was still walking, working, talking, and being active. They had no idea. 
I was already feeling sick, but it's like you tell somebody, oh, I'm feeling sick, but you don't want to like, like tell people that so much because then they don't believe you. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I have such a high pain tolerance. So since May 9th, I've had um, infusions. I've had uh, treatments here at MD Anderson um, just to figure out what the disorder is. I am happy to report as of Friday, my iron has reached normal levels, but, Great. Awesome. but uh, my other blood work is still a little umphy and that's why I'm still here in Houston currently. Um, but in, in between all that, I'm seeing seven specialists because my blood pressure has attacked my organs and my main organ that it has attacked and damages my heart. Um, I have now been diagnosed with this big, huge, long word but it's pretty much where the muscle around the heart gets so thick that it just ages your heart. And uh, how my cardiologist said is you, in easier terms to understand is you have a 60 year old heart and a 36 year old body. Wow. It's like at any point, at any point with any type of different stress in your body, you can have a cardiac arrest. And I was just like, like really but during that whole process uh i almost lost my business um i i i was in medication i lost half of my motor skills for about two or three weeks i could not speak correctly um, i was thinking but i couldn't speak at some points i was not able to even think of words to talk like it would agitate like I'm over here training my assistants and training Jerome on how to do this. And I couldn't verbally say what I wanted. So I was being extremely hard on myself. And at one point I looked at my fiance and I said, I can't do this. I can't do this. I'm like, and my son looked at me and said, mom, you raised us that you cannot say I can't. You're not a quitter and you're not going to quit. So I, I worked really, really hard in trying to recreate me because I found out that even though I loved what I was doing, it was actually killing me. Uh, I take everything so hands-on and so personal that working with 25 owners at that point, working with 25 homes I was managing, working with all my other clients, working with Jerome's clients, was actually the stress was killing me and I had no idea, but I did not know how to recreate it at that point. I got sick and I can tell you that God told me, okay, you're gonna get sick because this is your chance to recreate yourself. You're more than what you were for two, three years. And it took me about a week to actually listen. I was having some really major, major um, episodes where I was doubting myself. I was like, I created all this. I'm supposed to move my daughter to Hawaii. How am I going to afford this? I'm like, right. I'm losing clients left and right. I'm like, I everything was me. I was doing everything. I was doing the admin. I was doing the clerical. I was doing the accounting. And everything was on my phone. So when I'm over here trying to tra train my assistants on how to do something, they had no idea. But I couldn't, I couldn't move. I couldn't do anything. So I, one day I just got on my computer and I told Jerome, I said, all right, um, I think this is the time that I had to step away from the managing side of things. I love the hospitality. I, we have our own personal, but with that, I also had to think about everybody else that I was impacting. My whole team of 12 that I had built, my logistics team my assistants, my real estate part of the team. It wasn't just going to affect me that I was worried about. I'm now, I'm, uh, it's affecting 12 others. I'm from now going from 30 properties that I'm managing to five. So everybody was like, no, Ruby, forget that. Forget that. We just want you to be better. And I was like, at that point, the only people that were behind me, cheering me on was the STR family from every point of the world. I had people from Australia reaching out to me. I had local managers reaching out to me. I had people from 
California, New York, y'all reached out to me several times. And it was because of those connections made back in March. And then one day I just, I said, okay, this is the plan. This is what I'm going to execute now. I still love showing people. I still love educating people because the short-term rental industry has changed my life for the best. I'm able to move my daughter to Hawaii for school. I'm able to work at any point in time that I want to. I'm able to, what, two years ago, I wasn't able to travel because I was so busy. But I was able to work for myself. And So, so I want to I inter- interrupt you again. Sorry, I keep interrupting you. No, no, no. Um, wa- walk us through. Okay, so you, you had this crazy experience happen. Um, how do you decide what is important and how to kind of reduce it? Um, kind of like w- the position that you're in. Uh, okay, I'm going to try not to cry on this one. No, no, take your time. This is actually very You're going to make me cry. Take your time. Take your time. So, it was my hard head, my, because I'm, I'm very, I'm an A-type personality. I'm an alpha female. I'm, I'm just alpha. You don't tell me what, I'm just very alpha. <laughs> um, thankfully, Jerome understands that. Uh, when Jerome came to me and said, the doctor is wanting you to completely uh, take some time off. I looked at him and said, no, I can't do this. I can't. I've created this for four years. I can't just quit. And he said, it's, it's killing you. And I said, no, it's not. It's, it's not. It's not. It's just, I need more help, but I can't get the help. But it was just me putting excuses. Um, it was actually, let's see. It was actually, um, yeah, it was actually about two, three, about a month ago, um, in May, um, he actually gave me an ultimatum. He said, I love you too much. You're killing yourself. If you don't change the way or, or the, where you're wanting your business to go to, I have no other choice but to walk away. Oh, wow. And I've already been married previously for 16 years. I, that is a totally different relationship. And thankfully, my ex-husband and Jerome are like best buds, which is great. That's awesome. That's great. But um, And I looked at him and I said, what do you mean? He's like, you can't do this. Your children, you're saying you're doing this for your children, but then you're not saying your children. You're putting too much into this. You're you're killing yourself. So that was my breaking point. That was my breaking point. My children and Jerome are so close that I didn't want to break that again. Um, and I recreated what is now a consulting firm where I help, um, owners or people wanting to come into the short term rental space. I create the infrastructure for them. I give them all my bad that I've done so they won't have to do the bad. And I empower them by giving them and building the infrastructure needed by giving them the opportunity to work with my network that I've created. And then I put in a little twist and I added the Wet in Bed podcast, which that is another piece that I absolutely love. And now I'm doing consulting with wedding venues that are wanting to jump into the short-term rental space by adding lodging. And I absolutely love it. And since I took that shift, and this is the, and this is like amazing. Since I took that shift, when I said, okay, I sent out an email and I only kept select few of people that I was still managing for, I was able to pick up. So keep in mind from 30 to five in less than a month, I was able to get back to 55 co-host properties that I'm just assisting them in building their infrastructure. And I have five wedding venue clients that I'm working with and I'm only working a fraction of the time and I love it. Wow. And wow. I've been able to come here to Houston without a worry in the world that something's happening back at home. I'm able to then tell the people I'm working with, this is your logistics team. This is the people that I've worked with my network, my cleaner, uh, who is, she's going to be on a panel. My pest control is going to be on a panel. Um, 
and I and I say these are your people. So I was able to remove so many uh, properties, but then now it's I gave them more, and then and I'm giving them easier. Like I'm only working with people that want to actually build and and work, rather than just, just taking something in for a number. And realizing that was hard for me just because I am an alpha female. I want to do the things how I want to do it. I right. And, and <laughs> to be humble about it is huge. When my 20-year-old comes to me and says, Mom, listen to Jerome or Mom, put your phone down. I actually have to do it now because I, I, I have to listen. I have to listen because they're the ones that are looking at me. And my why has always been my children. I am That's doing awesome. what I do today can, because of them. Can can I chime in on here? Um, first and foremost, I want to say that um, you look great. Thank you. And you sound excellent. You know, i um, happy to hear that. Another thing that I'm totally thrilled about is, you know, and for the listeners, be, before we jumped on to this, um, start the podcast, we all laughing, joking, cool, great. I mean, you're for the 30 times being in the hospital, the infusions, the treatment, the specialist that you're seeing, the news that you're getting. I have to say, your spirits are hot. Like, if you didn't tell me any of this, I would not have had any clue at all. You know, and the one thing I keep hearing is basically, I, I heard you say God, which God first, right? And you surround yourself with your family that just give you everything that you need, even when they tell you the things that they need to tell you, regardless if you like it or not because they love you so can you just go into that just a little bit of just the support and cast that you have around you to get you through you know these challenges absolutely so I'm an only child um my mom and my stepdad have been a huge support system my dad has come back into my life after a couple of years of him going MIA due to my parents separation but uh Jerome has He's not the emotional type, my fiance. He's um, he's he's just a support. He's just support. He he loves being behind me, and I'm over here trying to get used to him and saying like, "Honey, you're gonna have to be on that stage, and you're gonna have to like, you're gonna have to rock this." Um, we're, we're I'm training him little by little. But my children, my children, uh, like I said, I I had my first at 16, then 18, then at 20. Um, I finished high school, graduated high school a year early. Um, I tried going to college and um, I did not get accepted or get financially assisted to go to college. So here goes where I went into corporate America. My support system at home has been remarkable. My mother-in-law is down from Oklahoma. The support system locally has been tough uh, just because mm, how I look. I'm very private. I was very private on what was happening behind closed doors. Um, I have had to close a lot of low, like doors and relationships that were toxic, that was not going to help me. I don't know wow. how I would have been able to go through that without the network and community we built since March. Like I said, the family, Judah, uh, the whole committee for the short-term growth summit, uh, Judah, Travis, Derek, X, all of them have been such a great support system. Our team for the real estate side, Judy and Mario, they've been there. My assistants, um, poor things, um, I, I pretty much just told them to jump head first and it pretty much didn't give them any direction. But <laughs> it's definitely the people that I've surrounded myself and lately, uh, I honestly don't know what I would have been through or if this if this episode was or this me uh, episode was a year ago where I would be in life because I didn't have the right people. I didn't have the right. Oh, so so I, I want to kind of touch on um, how like when you jump into entrepreneurship, 
sometimes um, it's hard to turn it off. And you kind of mentioned like creating parameters and like how you've kind of have some parameters in place where the phone rings at a certain time, you can't pick it up. Uh, Cause I think there's, there's this, there's like cycles. So the first cycle is like you're, you're building. So it just requires a lot of like hands on, um, you know, eventually you get to a stage where maybe you're delegating um, some of those tasks or you hire on and you're trying to scale, but it still requires a lot of work. Um, you know, eventually you like to get to a stage where automation and, and your hands off, but you know, that's, it depends on the operator and, and if you even want that and some people like to yeah, be hands on. Yeah, that's very true. So uh, for just you going through all these experiences, like what are maybe some, some things like in, in, in retrospect or in reflection that you would do differently or are implementing to kind of find, and again, there's never a right balance, but there's improving the balance. Absolutely. Uh, when I first started my entrepreneurial journey, and that goes from when I was 22, I did not have boundaries. I did not put boundaries. And that was with three kids under the age of four. I didn't have no boundaries. I can honestly say that that ruined my first marriage is to no boundaries. And again, me, me being who I am, and being okay, I need to work, 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 work. I'm the type of person where you can't tell me, oh, we can't afford this. I'm the type of person that's like, okay, so how much is it? Let me figure out how to get it. And then I will bust my ass pretty much to finally get that. But that wasn't the right approach. That has never been the right approach. So this past three months, I've had to set expectations. I've had to set boundaries, parameters. My calendar is different. My I'm, uh, When I do my meetings, if it doesn't work for you, I'm sorry. I'm not going to over here overextend myself. I'm still struggling because it's been t- almost 18 years of me working one way. And now I'm trying to recreate something. It's hard. It's really, really hard. But when Jerome gave me that ultimatum, it's like I can't fall down the same rabbit hole again. I can't. And my daughter's about to move into Hawaii. She's going to be an eight-hour flight away. I'm, I want to be able to jump on a plane and go visit her when I want. Not over here be dependent on what my calendar that's so packed and full of my phone ringing every, every minute of the day and me having to answer it. So set the boundaries from day one. Even as hard as that is, even if you have to change those boundaries here and there, set them. And then adjust them as needed, but don't leave a whole open calendar. Gotcha. I think that's some great advice. I'm I'm, I'm happy that you're sharing. You know, um, and for the listeners, you know, obviously, you know, you're hearing Ruby's story, and Ruby's a go-getter. She's a she's an alpha. You know, all she knows is to seek, destroy, right? <laughs> you know, and and anybody's in her way, she's going to bring them with them, or they're going to get crushed over. You know. And, but at times, you know, that can come with, you know, other things, right? And in, in your case, it was um, some big time health scares. But the whole thing to this is that, listen, trials and tribulations happens to everybody. It's who you surround yourself by, who you surround yourself with that can help you get through these trials and tribulations. Because I'm going to continue to bring up that you right now, is like the most positive individual with this recent current events that's going on with your smile, your energy, you know, being cool, being here. You didn't have to do this, right? You know, and um, and 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 I think that's fantastic. But um, let's move on just just a little bit, there. Let's let's talk a little bit about this STR Growth Summit, right? Um, this STR Growth Summit is is something obviously you're uh, a co-creator, you know, too. So how did this all come about? <laughs> That's funny. So Judah, um, he is, actually I was on his book, Reputation Driven. I came in in the last four days before the book um, ended or how are they allowed, or actually four days before the stories were sent to the publishing company for print. I had four hours, but I had so much stuff I had to do. Um, I wrote it in six hours and then it off went. I met him in Nashville 
and we 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 had our authors meetups and and he was pretty much just like Ruby, uh, I'm gonna stay with you. Um, Jerome was on the other side since he was VIP and I was just normal, so I was over here interacting with everybody just like I love. And then one night, um, it was a Tuesday after the hospital host party. Uh, we went um, looking for another place just to hang and talk. Me, Jerome, and Judah. It was just us three. Well, they wouldn't let him go into any bar because of his backpack. And then our last place that we went to, we they let us in. We had to leave the backpack there. And uh, Judah just looked up to me and said, I want to create a conference where people like you because you've already known my story from that point on uh, um so much has happened in the last three months from that point on he's like everybody talks about like you said success 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 but they don't talk about the failures on how to overcome those failures so i told him let's do it i got the great person that can help us put all the pieces together and when we came back the day before I got sick and came back to uh, Texas, I put him in touch with Xavier Norton, who is um, the logistics. He's the magic behind the scenes. He's the one that does everything. Um, and and while I shout was, out to him, yes, right? big huge shout out to him because <laughs> while I was down and sick, they were still able to move. And then the relationships we built there. Travis bought from um, Denver and Derek. We then started communicating, and I just told Judah, I was like, "I'm gonna send him off to you. If that's okay. I'm, 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 not, I'm sick." He's like, "Yes, sister, send him off." And that's how it started. It was just on a story of so many tribulations and failures that I wasn't scared, or we weren't scared. Judah and I were not scared to share that made us realize that there were so many people wanting that. They were wanting the the transparency. Like how many people are gonna tell you, yeah, my 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 fiance over here gave me an ultimatum. <laughs> it's it's that stuff. I'm very transparent and 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 it just started from there. And uh Jerome hates being called an expert. He hates it. He's like, I'm not no expert. And I said, no, 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 this is what it means. You, with your failures or our failures in the industry of when we started in 2018, 2017, well, there was no way for us to even know what we were doing at that point. And for us to still be here and overcoming those obstacles, that's what makes us the expert. Because we're okay with telling people, this is what we did and we failed hard, but we weren't scared to come back. And and since in the last three months we've been working or the team has been working their tails off trying to get everything implemented correctly, Judah is a, his marketing is just outstanding. So that's why me and him go good hand in hand. And then the relationships that I was able to build throughout the last three months, everybody on that stage has an impact, has impacted my life in one shape or form in the last three months. And he gave me the ability to work up the agenda and the speakers list. And, and between me and him, I'm like, we need to get this person. We need to get a meet at Lenny. I'm like, here's so it's oh. that stuff. But Boom. it's exciting. <laughs> uh, the traction we're getting is exciting. Uh, it is going to be different. We are going to be vulnerable. We are going to put our, our what, what, it's taken us to get to where we're at because it's not all rainbows. It's not. And, and if the, the community, the community aspect is so important, the community that has uplifted me since the first hospitalization I've had, they, they've cheered me on. Even when I'm having these tough conversations, I'm like, I don't know what to do. Um, they're there. Like when Jerome gave me the ultimatum, we were, all our friends, like with Travis and Derek. And all I told him was just like, give me one moment. They weren't there just like talk, not nothing like that. Nothing. They they were just like, we're here for y'all. And it was it was different. But that's what the SDR Growth Summit is gonna be all about. 
We're going to have amazing speakers. Um, and Julie George is going to be our MC and our keynote speaker. Um, with our, my story with her is actually come full circle. Um, I remember following her on Clubhouse and before then. <laughs> and she allowed or let me in the little speaking thingy room. And I actually have it screenshotted. It was like back in 2020. <laughs> And wow. I met her in Nashville, and now she is emceeing one of the conferences I'm co-creating. So Isn't crazy. that something? Wow! Isn't that full something? Full circle, and it, you just Amazing. have to listen. I just, you just have to listen. Uh, well, God talks to you. The universe talks to you. Yes, He does. You just have yes. to listen. I wasn't listening when I was in my 20s. I wasn't listening well, in my early 30s. <laughs> um, <laughs> now I'm listening, and my children are seeing it, and now it's. It's it's just I, I I'm in a very good place. I'm still going through health struggles. I still they still haven't really diagnosed me with what I have, but I know that because of this, I am where I'm at. If it wasn't because of the health issues I was going with, I would still be where I was three months ago. And that was very unhappy. I was unhappy. Even though I was doing what I wanted, I was unhappy. So with the with the SCR Growth Summit, so um, what is the 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 value proposition? I guess like who's the avatar? Who are you targeting? And what do you want them to get out of it? I guess um, for for the listeners and and for anybody that's out there that's gonna listen to the podcast. Anyone that feels anyone actually anybody wanting to come into the space, either even though if you're if you don't have a short term rental or you have twenty. At 20, or even if you're managing 20, you're going through some stuff that I was going through, that Jerome was going through managing those, and people don't talk about it. They just say, I'm the manager in managing this. It's that new person that sees all these TikToks but doesn't know where to start. <laughs> it's that middle person that is over here want, uh, already... Uh, Kids are going to college and and they're wanting something different, but they just want to build their wealth. It's it's not just one specific party. It's someone that wants to know and see very vulnerable people on stage. And these people are going to say, this is what helped us. This is what you can take right now and do it. For instance, like one of my... Um, um, segments I'm going to be telling everybody before the conference make sure you create your Facebook page and your Instagram page for your short term rental or your short term rental management company or your co-host property because on like stage it. we are all all 300 of us are going to get their phones out we're going to create an ad and then five days later in our group we're going to see what the success of all those people are that is wow. who and what we're trying to target it's people that want i love that hands-on experience hands-on stories and somebody that you can just like say hey i'm going through this problem can you help me i love that i i love that i love the uh the action taking right right then and there we're not going to wait we all going to do this together we're here boom here's the steps go in do xyz and then a piece where a lot of people normally don't do, which you just talked about, is we are all going to report back in five days, which is the follow up, right? You know, so um, I, I think that's special. Hey, tell us, um, uh, uh, um, if you could, just tell us a little bit uh, uh, about your um, your co-hosting with um, with Helen Christopher. Yeah, a little bit. So I met her also in Nashville. And she introduced herself and she said, I have a wedding venue in New York. And then I looked at her and I said, you have a what? And she's like, yeah, I don't have a wedding venue. And I said, I don't have a wedding venue, but I have houses that I work with, my short-term rentals that I work with wedding venues, and we hit it off. So we exchanged uh, our, our Instagram handles, not even our phone numbers, just Instagram handles. And then the next day I had this at 2 o'clock in the morning. I'm like over here like, we should do a podcast. And then I texted her or messaged her and I said, I have a crazy idea. You can say no. I know you just met me. You probably think I'm crazy. 
And she's like, no, what is it? And she's <laughs> yeah. like, let's do a podcast. And, and we, we created a podcast. But then that's when I got sick. So Helen waited for me almost two months until, uh, until we were able to roll out our first episode. And then our first episode, I was heavily medicated with my whole issue that I was having. Oh. So you can hear the difference. You can actually hear the difference from how the episodes are being recorded on the ability I had to speak in episode one and now on episode four, um, which is crazy. But the whole Wet in, Bod- Wet in Bed podcast is just to open up the um, open up a box. Uh, you can say the Pandora box of how to use a property to maximize your wedding, uh, your your revenues by pairing up with either wedding venues in the area or hosting micro weddings or hosting people where to get dressed before a wedding. Um, and then we just showcase properties that we think will be great. We bring in um, a owner and we give them tips and tricks on how they can start um, to do just that. But it's, it's, it's definitely different. Um, very, very different because a lot of people, when I talk to them, I'm like, yeah, you can do a wedding, a micro wedding in your short term rental. First thing they say is like, I'm not doing no events. Absolutely not. What happens if the damage, what happens here? What happens there? Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> hold on, hold on. So it's, we're trying to, to just promote easier ways to maximize your revenue by creating weddings or events. And at what point, honestly, if it, it goes, like for instance, here in New Braunfels, our low season for short-term rentals is during the fall and winter. Fall and winter and spring are our high peak seasons for weddings. So what I was able to do is partner up with vet- wedding venues that were near our short-term rentals and say, hey, by the way, if you have a wedding party that is looking for lodging, Here's my information. And I was able to keep our calendars pretty much booked for our low season just by pairing it up with wedding venues. And it helps. Wow. Yeah. So that's that's wow. what our, our podcast is about. It's just showcasing how wedding how we marry weddings with short term rentals. Yeah, and I, and I uh, you know, I like that strategy because I think it's, uh, you know, got to be creative, and and there's uh, just multiple ways to kind of create income with with a space. So, you know, I think that's seems like there's a lot more interest, um, kind of in that niche. So, you know, I think you guys are filling filling a void uh, by talking about it. So, I think that's great. So, that that's awesome. So let's let's transition to freedom. I know we kind of talked about it a little bit, um, but um, you know, I I guess if you could define it for us, like what what does finding your freedom mean to you? Actually, I, I asked my daughter that this question. And that question, I told her this morning. I said, "What does freedom mean to me?" I'm like, "What does freedom mean?" To me? And she looked at me. She's like, "I'm going to Hawaii." I was like, "Actually, you know what?" <laughs> so I wrote it down. I actually wrote it down. I said, "I know I'm, I'm horrible, but I'm going to read it." Finding my freedom means overcoming adversity and establishing a nurturing, encouraging environment where my children can dream and achieve their aspirations. My daughter. When she was four years old, she wanted to be a mermaid. Of course, that wasn't going to happen. Um, her senior year, uh, she wanted to go uh, to the University of Hawaii. She, of course, did not get accepted. And so she went to another college in the middle of West Texas. And she was mad. And I said, honey, use this as your stepping stone. You're not going to quit. You're going to get to Hawaii. Uh, about January of this year, she calls me up and starts crying and says, I got into Hawaii. Uh, she applied wow. and now she's in the marine biology um, program. She's going to be getting certified as scuba. She's going to be living in the big island. Um, and that's my so freedom cool. is I've been the allowing my children to dream and not stomping on their dreams. Because my parents allowed me to dream. My mom babysat my kids from the minute they were born so I can achieve my dreams. So me wow. having the ability to do that for them and then for my future children, grandchildren, that's my freedom. 
That's great. That's great. That's great. And and that's what Find Your Freedom is about. I, I love um what you wrote. I love everything about it. So, um, hey, there's going to be a lot of people who can relate, and there's going to be a lot of people who want to come out and, and, and reach out to you. So how can they uh, get in contact with you? Absolutely. They can find me on Instagram on Ruby underscore Stellar B&B, or you can find me on Facebook, Ruby Cervin Zapata. Um, there's not many out there with that name, so you can find me relatively, or you can just find me on the S tier str growth summit facebook instagram or even website but uh i'll be showing my story on stage being a little vulnerable and then uh jerome and i will also be sitting on the couples panel uh to discuss um how a strong foundation at home can actually lead to success that's beautiful that's beautiful all right so we're, we're coming to the end of the show and um in the way that we in this show is we do this big boom. So the whole objective here really is to um, bust some speakers here, right? So I'm going to count to three, one, two, three, and then all three of us are going to say boom as loud as we can. All right? All right, so I'm going to count to three. One, two, three. Boom. Awesome, 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 awesome. Check this out, man. This is one of the most inspiring episodes that we have to date. You want to tune in, you want to reach out, you know, and you want to come to the uh, STR Growth Conference as well, because there's going to be so many things that shared there and it's just going to be absolutely amazing. Now, when you take a listen to this episode and other episodes, what we need is a five star review. That's the way that we continue to bring on guests like Ruby and other guests to continue to provide value so you can learn and be inspired and be motivated as well as educated to move on to bigger and better things. Now, another thing we're going to need is we also need you to share this. We need you to share this with everybody in your contacts, all your coworkers, the ones you like, the ones you don't like. We just need you to get it out because there's just so much that we want to share with so many people. And don't forget to get your freedom kit. It's absolutely free, easily downloadable. All you have to do is go to www find your freedom rei.com forward slash freedom kit and until the next episode of find your freedom we talk to you soon Thanks. Peace. bye thanks for listening to find your freedom be sure to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts while you're at it please help us spread the word by leaving a rating and review and sharing the podcast with friends family and colleagues until next time Get out there and find your freedom.